Hey there, YouTubers. Uh, School of Tomorrow, I'm mainly talking to people who've enrolled in fall orientation, well, fall semester, fall term. I don't know if it's a semester. Um, school is open, fall orientation. So if you click on this, you don't go straight to YouTube, you go into my blogs, because that's a place, as I'm recommending to teachers, as you've heard me say, that's a place to collate and impose some kind of order or chronology on your material. Your material, in some contexts, may just be a pile, right? What we call a pile. Just random, unordered, you could say, a stash, almost. That's one kind of a data structure. But usually, you'll want to spell out particular sequences. And so here, on September 10, I'm like, hey, fall's beginning. It's not like we've been closed. The school is open, but it's fall now. And actually, to be more precise, it's September 15th, 2020, in Portland, Oregon. And yes, the air quality has been hazardous and so on. And uh, the big story is the fires here. And on Facebook, that's been a big discussion, tying it back to grid talk as usual. Like, to what extent have mitigation measures demand side policies like less use of air conditioning, you know, help us keep these fires under control by not running your power all the time. Th these kind of questions, right? And you find a lot of mutual awareness about, you know, grid issues, which is good. California is prototypical of the future, as is Australia and so on. So Octavia Butler, by the way, I'm going to put her, leave her here on Facebook for a bit, is our door into taking science fiction really seriously. I compare her here to Jim Henson and Walt Disney. And if you've been with this channel, you've probably heard those rants of mine at some point, but I'll say them again. <clears throat> they were both trying to break out of the stereotype that what they were their primary genre was, quote, for kids. Right, Jim Henson is the guy behind the Muppets, and Defunct Land, which is a channel I've really hyped, is or pushed, uh, advertised. No, I don't. I just like those Defunct Land videos on that channel, and I've learned a lot, including about. Well, let's see. Was the Jim Henson Defunct Land? Anyway, I've learned a lot about Disney through there for sure, and I've encouraged that. I weave my curriculum which is currently a YouTube channel, right? And I make a lot of reference to other YouTube channels. I also talk about Medium quite a bit, just to give you a sense of the syllabus. One good place to go, if you're still getting oriented, is to worldgame.blogspot.com. Check that out. I'm going to show you the margin on the right, something to look into. A lot of the resources I keep going back to, cycling back to, and I'm not going to say all of them are here, but a good many. Like Wiki Educator is here. Um, my 4D Solutions uh, homepage, which we've been hovering through. We've been in the last few videos doing my mathematical canvas as a kind of a deep dive, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm still, that's still in my thinking as we're doing all this. The main point of this video, actually, and I haven't even gotten to it yet, and this is not meant to be a super long video, is congruence versus chirality, which is handedness, the difference it makes when something's left or right-handed, as we say. And this is a whole discussion in geometry, but also, I would just argue, in generic philosophy. As philosophers, we'd like to get to what are the primitive phenomenological terms of being in space, right? So um, by that I just mean uh, think about this formula, we'll call it, in synergetics. What does it mean? Where are we at with this? This is um, a set of parameters. You could say the P and the F are what we have control over, and the twos are pretty much all there. I mean, they're eternal. You could We have less control over the twos, you could say. They sort of define the constants. P is a mix of prime numbers, so that's just saying a lot of numbers, because all numbers are products of primes. If we're just talking sphere packing, we're going to have a discrete whole number number of 
balls, and like on the right here, this originally comes from ball packing, from the 112, that whole thing, 112, 42, 92, 162, icosahedral numbers, cube octahedral numbers. There's some generalization, enough generalization that you can do around here to develop the mnemonic, okay, that the two in the multiplicative term, the complex or the more elaborate term here with the P and the F, that two is about concave and convex or doubling uh, a tunis relating to a multiplicative growth, in other words, shell growth. So we're radiating outward with this growing shell, more and more spheres, you could say, and the plus two is just the two you need to sort of add or consider separately almost as poles for axial spin, right? Mnemonic is the term I used earlier, and it means this will help orient you and get you to remember important characteristics of just being in space. You have convex and concave surfaces. That's the multiplicative two-ness, right? You have a growing sphere, a ball, a shape, any shape. The shape you can modulate with this P character. In other words, you can change the mix of primes, you could say, fiddle with the dials, and the shape of the thing that you're growing is controllable. And then you could say, right, this is just to help you remember, the F term is the frequency. So without changing the shape, you can subdivide greater or less. You can be more or less in this particular dimension of frequency, okay? And then the plus two, as I said, is rotation or axial. Uh, you know, you, you can grow in and out in sort of a concave, convex, radial pattern, and then you can spin left or right, clockwise, counterclockwise, and that's where we get to chirality, left and right, and what's my right is your left, all that confusing stuff, to potentially confusing to people, right? You get people saying in adulthood, I never did quite get the left and right, I always have trouble with and so forth. Seems like more exercise of that concept, and I think one would be indicated, and one way we sort of skirt the concept, I would say, in contemporary geometry is we dwell on congruence at the expense of chirality. We emphasize the congruence of things even when their handedness would set them apart. And we say, well, yeah, but they were still congruent. And this debate I've had going into, like, what's the tetrahedra that fills space discussion? Because some people would say a half might, if you can turn it inside out. Where's my mite cube? I got some mites here. Back to show and tell just for a sec. Sorry about the light there in the back. or It's kind of atmospheric. Oh, man, I don't want these to all fall apart when I pick them up. These are only held together by magnets, right? But this is a rhombic dodecahedron. And I can peel off the nibs here, which are also, you could think of as part of a cube, each one and snap out what we call a mite, a space filler. And as we've been talking in, also on Facebook, where I have some, some kind of many-to-many -many conversations asynchronously, we talk about chirality here as well and get into geometry quite a bit. There's weather conditions. That's Seattle getting worse, right? Uh, let's see, we're talking a lot about science fiction in here because math is science, Martian math is science fiction. And so the dust channel, I told you I'm going to mention channels from time to time. Here we're making fun or having a good time looking at some old advertising. And buried deep in there, there would be some cultural links, right? So for example, this is from real humans, and we're talking about like the robotic nature, the mannequin-like nature of these figures here. I mean, this guy's hair, the plastic there, these look like mannequins, don't they, to me anyway. Okay, so on up. I'm getting to chirality again from some different angles, showing you how it becomes important in early language games. And by early, I mean right there at the primitive phenomenological Bill, bill beginning like the sort of big bang of 
original concepts when we're just starting out to talk about like the basics of what do we mean by points, lines, vertexes, faces, facets, you know, it's like say you're in kindergarten but you're going to go into architecture and you know so the beginning of your architecture uh, language is taking root in kindergarten and you're learning about eventually concave, convex, you could say it's the design science vocabulary and we link it back to nature herself and uh, I'll, I'll just throw in that in the Heidegger concerning technology conversation you've got this use of the word technology and then kind of the use of in our Wittgenstein world is how we get to the meaning of we investigate and now investigating the meaning of technology in the fuller syllabus, it's even easier given there's a four volume dictionary to go with it as well. The idea of a dictionary, it's very, very well organized, okay? But what we mean by technology and synergetics can, can include what's non human, right? And that sounds like, oh, you mean Martian. No, I just mean nature, right? We call that technology. We're talking about the importance of copy left in the current economy. See, the inability to tell the truth about it, it's not like a scandalous truth. It's like people got bored after the Linux revolution stopped being about making tons of money really quickly. Once the get-rich-quick angle was gone and it was about some more mundane things, then, you know, we lost the thread and we keep having problems keeping on track with the threads, right? It's like everybody wanders off into distraction. Though. Talking about automation, back to Tulsi, looking for Joe Rogan. Hey, where's my chirality thread? Lula, looking at South America. In other words, Facebook is a fun place for me to just hang out and uh, talk, talk with people about stuff. So, and I'm suggesting as a teacher as well, you're going to want to find some, think of uh, Slack or what are the different options you have. IRC we used to call it, Internet Relay Chat. How synchronous or asynchronous do you want to be? Do you want to have a lot of real time, like Zoom meetups? Think about, I'm hearkening back to earlier videos, think about, oops, back to Octavia here. Okay, I'm going backwards, obviously. There we go. How mirrors break biology. So here's something you might want to check out as a segue video after we're done here. If you can find it, if it's still there on YouTube and so on, this is not one of my videos. I'm going to just plug it here when it comes up. And turn off the sound skip ads when I can. So what I'm going to suggest is diving into the subject of left and right handed, which is what we're doing here, and connecting that to our discussion of the might in synergetics. Left and right A modules, left and right B modules. Gerald's saying is inside out the same as mirror image. And you know, you would think in general it's not, right? Because you can't turn like this remote inside out, right, it would just break it. It wouldn't be at all like similar to itself in any way. But when you do get down to the tetrahedron and its properties, you can start to see it inside out here. And in fact, our old friend the jitterbug, I'll show you, with the tetrahedron you can do an inside outing. And again, mnemonics help you remember that final show and tell. Again, we're, we're talking about handedness and chirality and the whole idea. And you've seen this a lot. And so when I come down to the octahedron, with the wooden sticks version, you can do different animations, right? You're not limited to just one way of thinking about this. Basically, we're connecting up our concentric hierarchy in kind of a continuous, depending on how you do it, transformation that ends up with the tetrahedron here, but doesn't stop there. It's like we can do this kind of flattening out, and or we could say any vertex can plunge through the opposite face. 
you know, this one over here can plunge through its opposite and come out the other end. So there's a real close connection between inside outing and we can get handedness into that discussion easily with the tetrahedron coloring the vertexes. As you see in the picture here. So let's let's focus on chirality in connection also with spin and concave convex and all these like primitive aspects of phenomena. Think of us, we'll put on a phenomenology hat and just say, okay, just the topology of a thing, we'd like to discuss it in this language in terms of its convexity, its edges, its faces. It's very topological, right, a language. And of course, we give a lot of credit to Euler and stuff. It's not like we're just ripping it out of math and running off into philosophy cackling. We're keeping all the links to math, but we don't have to make the math teachers teach this stuff, right? That wouldn't be right if they don't want to. All right, so continuing with the fall term and uh, see if I've left out anything. Don't forget, you can do on the, you can dabble in your politics and do your free expressions and it's not tightly tracked time. It's not like you have to do a timesheet and say, well, now I'm listening to School of Tomorrow, but now I'm doing something else. It's like, no, you're driving a truck, whatever. Oh, yeah, truck. Back to my resources. You, you may have seen how we plunged into a truck simulation about two videos ago, or wasn't it? Because I'm doing Truckers for Peace or Truckers Without Borders or whatever, that's the Trucker Exchange Program, where you as a trucker are getting academic credit to like really get steeped in another culture as you also learn to drive the roads there, perhaps as an apprentice, right? And a truck stop, you meet a lot of your buddies from this, quote, school, but you're always also exercising your diplomatic skills at a truck stop in terms of this program is about, you know, letting someone from Texas drive in China or someone in Russia can drive in Brazil or et cetera, right? It's a database that matches drivers with their desires in some, some respects. You'll probably get offers, right? As an experienced driver, it's like these are places you could go. So you're kind of climbing an academic ladder almost getting great, gaining in rank, rank, excuse me, rank. And I'm not even, I can't even, I don't even have a truck. And I don't drive a truck right now. So to, for me to be thinking about all this is kind of, what? Yeah. So it's on Medium that you'll find a lot more about this truckers program. And that's also where you've got the congruence versus chirality thing that we're looking at here. So I just wanted to point you to, to syllabus resources. I'm not saying sit down now and read all 309 of these. I'm saying as you take in my talks, pick out themes that interest you in them, and then try to figure out, you know, exhaust what I have to offer on that as you continue down your path and enhancing whatever you get from this curriculum with what you already have in your curriculum and so forth, right? So we're looking for synergy. And we're using this kind of philosophy technique of investigating meanings through the language games, like when I talk about grid talk, what do the simulations look like, and so on. And city planning and how that connects to movie making. So I'm throwing out some of the themes here that you're going to find if you scroll through my medium. And I'm actually looking for a one that's very closely truck related for my final focus. And, okay, there's, I would say, some satire here. It's not like you've got all the time in the world to be reading my stuff, but you should know what's here, right? Or you should get a, a general sense of it. There we go. GST and Truckers for Peace, T4P. 
we'll pull that up and this is where we continue to develop our idea of a personal workspace which is like the cab of a truck right we're also talking about linking current and currency the word juice comes to mind if you go back and look at one of my old manifestos right this is an introduction to the general systems theory concepts at my website which is at grunch.net this would be under the slash synergetics file header and so on we've been here before we've toured here before this is where I mix it up with other medium people and we read each other's stuff and it's an, a good community to some degree it's overwhelmingly overwhelmingly huge but you can find people this way by following them and looking for overlapping interest and so on good uh, good space and I'll end on that note and I'll see you guys in the next video